In World War II, one American fighter was so big, so heavy, and so hungry for fuel, the pilots joked that it was built around the engine with space left over for the pilot by accident. Yet this same beast once returned home with most of a wing missing, and another had an entire cylinder blown off its engine, but still flew on. Was this hulking monster, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, genius or junk? At first glance, the P-47 Thunderbolt defies expectations, not just in shape, but its sheer scale. This was the heaviest single-engine fighter of World War II. More than 17,000 pounds fully loaded, its massive 2,000 horsepower engine had enough muscle to push the Thunderbolt past 413 miles per hour, with a wingspan of 40 feet and a fuselage built like a battering ram the P-47 was more than a fighter. It was a flying declaration of American industrial might. To understand the Thunderbolt, you have to understand the peculiar design philosophy of Republic Aviation. Its chief designer, Alexander Carvelli, had already built large tough fighters like the P-35 and P-43. When the US Army Corps asked for a new high-altitude interceptor, Cartvelli didn't want to build small, he wanted to build powerful. The key was the Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp 18 cylinders. More than 2,000 horsepower and a reputation as one of the toughest radial engines ever built. Cartvelli realised early on, if you're going to carry all that bulk and power, you need a supercharger that can keep the engine breathing at 30,000 feet. The solution? A massive turbo supercharger mounted behind the cockpit, fed by an elaborate maze of ducts. This made the P-47 big, really big, but it also made it capable of zooming to high altitude and diving back down with terrifying momentum. Even before it flew, some critics wondered if it was simply too heavy to be agile enough for dogfighting. When the first pilots got their hands on a Thunderbolt, reactions were mixed. On the runway, the P-47 felt clumsy. It soaked up long takeoff rolls and guzzled so much fuel that flight planners had to rethink mission profiles. And the bubble canopy version, iconic today, didn't show up until later in the war. Early P-47s had a razorback spine that limited rear visibility. But in the air, especially at 25,000 feet, everything changed. The turbo supercharger roared to life feeding the double wasp engine enough air to keep it powerful at altitude. Pilots affectionately nicknamed the P-47 the Jug. Some say it was short for Milk Jug, referring to the early version's chunky shape. Either way, the name stuck. Jug pilots were known for flying aggressively. The aircraft rewarded speed and energy. In a dive, a P-47 could exceed 500 miles per hour, one of the fastest controlled dives of the war. Its firepower was also devastating. 8.50 caliber Browning machine guns could spit nearly 12,000 rounds per minute combined. It could also shrug off brutal amounts of damage. Its rugged radial engine lacked a vulnerable liquid cooling system, meaning one lucky shot to the coolant wouldn't doom the plane. Stories of the Thunderbolt's ability to absorb damage became legendary. One famously came home with over 200 holes in the airframe. But one of the most famous stories reportedly happened in January 1945. A 20-year-old Brazilian pilot, Raimundo Canario, dove through poor weather over northern Italy, destroying three Tiger tanks in two attack runs. On his third pass, in low visibility, he slammed into a factory chimney, losing four feet of his right wing. Yet, the Thunderbolt stayed airborne and Canario nursed the mangled plane home, and once repaired, he flew it on 50 more missions. For ground attack tasks, that toughness proved essential. As the war progressed, the Thunderbolt evolved from high altitude escort fighter into one of the most feared close air support platforms of the conflict. Dive bombing, rocket attacks, low level strafing, 
that P-47 could take punishment and keep hammering enemy armour, trains and columns. German soldiers came to dread the distinctive scream of an inbound Thunderbolt dive. In the early war years, P-47 struggled to escort US bombers deep into Germany. They simply didn't have the range. The P-51 Mustang, with its laminar flue wings and efficient Merlin engine, quickly took over the role of long-range escort. But Republic found workarounds, additional fuel tanks, refined engine management and aerodynamic tweaks. By 1944, some late model P-47s could reach respectable ranges, though never matching the Mustang. But not everyone loved the Thunderbolt. Its critics pointed to its size and weight. It was the heaviest single-engine fighter of the war. Its fuel consumption. Bubble canopy, better range and improved handling arrive later than ideal. And mediocre turning performance. Dogfights requiring tight horizontal turns were not its strength. And finally, its complexity. The turbo supercharging system needed maintenance, especially in harsh environments. If you judge a fighter by sleekness, efficiency or pure manoeuvrability, the P-47 doesn't win. But then the case for its brilliance is very strong. It had survivability. It was one of the toughest fighters ever built. Devastating firepower. Its dive performance was legendary. Its versatility. It excelled as both a high altitude fighter and a ground attack monster. It was easy to fly. And finally, it had a strategic impact. It was crucial to the war in Europe, especially as a ground attack workhorse after D-Day. But how did the Jug stack up with its key rivals? The P-51 Mustang was faster, sleeker and far more fuel efficient. As an escort fighter it won hands down, but it couldn't take damage like the Jug, nor could it dive as safely. For ground attack the P-47 was often preferred. The Supermarine Spitfire it was a masterpiece of manoeuvrability, but the Spitfire was delicate compared to the Thunderbolt and struggled with range. In European escort and ground attack missions, the Jug was more versatile. The Focke-Wulf FW-190, the closest German counterpart. The FW-190 was agile, powerful and dangerous. At low and medium altitudes, it sometimes outperformed the P-47, but the Jug's high altitude abilities and dive speed gave it significant advantages. And the Messerschmitt BF-109. Light, nimble and deadly in experienced hands. But the 109 was cramped, had limited firepower and lacked the ruggedness and fire support capability of the P-47. The P-47 Thunderbolt wasn't universally loved. It wasn't the best dogfighter. It wasn't the most elegant and it certainly wasn't the most fuel efficient. But it was one of the most effective, durable and strategically impactful fighters of World War II. It filled multiple roles, adapted to evolving missions and protected countless pilots who trusted that, no matter how bad things got, the Jug could bring them home. But what do you think? The P-47 Thunderbolt, genius or junk? <laughs>